we are playing the first ever episode of Line of Liars. We have a line of people that have promised to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. right. Right. Yeah. Noah, Zarya, today you are competing head to head. We're gonna hit you with three rounds, three different games, and it's gonna be up to you to figure out who is holding the truth. For example, we have some people here who love to play sports. Who here loves to play sports? Easy. Love sports. Great, who's lying? Julian was late on the hand. <laughs> That's a lie. I was just thinking about how much I love sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is the dirtiest liar up here? I'm gonna give it to Sharon. I th I think I think you've got a great heart, and the heart is where the gold is. And I think like on the everything until you get to the heart, anyone who doesn't know you well, I feel like you play with them all day and it's pretty fun. I think my answer's to Sharon too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you like tomatoes? No. No? No. I like to I like tomato sauce, I like tomatoes and tacos. That's the only time. Who here likes dot 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 tomatoes? Hey guys, my name is Jace, uh, and I love tomatoes. Uh, I lived in Italy for almost a year, and you eat them almost every single day, so it's just a part of the life there. I'm Sharon, and I love tomatoes because it's, <laughs> it's food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Julian, and I also like tomatoes. I am Nicole, and I grew up eating tomatoes like apples. Hi, I'm Brian, and I love tomatoes, period. They're in a period. That's the shape of a tomato. Maybe he likes them. <laughs> three people within this line are lying. You will have three minutes to interrogate the group and identify the two truth tellers. I, I want to ask a question. Uh, Sharon, two favorite dishes that have tomatoes on them. Fried green tomatoes and just putting it on a good old hamburger. What is a green tomato? What do you do with the fried green tomato? You Describe bread it and fry it. And then eat it. And you eat it. You bread it with like egg? Egg and you do like breading like you would almost like fried chicken? I'm sorry I haven't heard of a breaded tomato before. Oh my before. god! Are they big? Are they small? They're that size. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, green? Yeah. yeah! I think Sharon's clear. I think Sharon's telling the truth. It's... She knew a whole recipe. I feel like that convinced me that she's telling the truth. You're pointing at me. You mentioned living in I Italy. I did, And yeah. you equated that to liking tomatoes. Name three dishes uh, pasta, with tomatoes. Pasta pomodora, uh, lasagna, and how about bolognese? Lasagna is my favorite food on the planet. So lasagna is your favorite food on the planet. Brian, I got a Talk question for me. you. What does a tomato taste like? If you bite into a good tomato, specifically for me, an heirloom tomato, like it's got it's got a good crunch and good chew through. Once you get into the middle of it, it's not necessarily like overly sweet, but juicy and delicious. Like I really like it, especially with salt. Wow, that was a lot. I'm not. I don't know if I'm convinced. I don't know if I'm convinced. That I, you answered the question really well. Nicole. Yes. As you say, you grew up loving tomatoes. Tomatoes are beautiful when you're talking about making the perfect burger. You need oh, that no. red layer. Yes. Yeah. I, I believe it. Julian in the middle, I just want you to say the word tomato for me. Tomato. <laughs> yeah. I'm lost. I, I genuinely believe. Except Julian. <laughs> All right, I'm going off of my instincts. You know, some of your responses, uh, they got really good towards the end, but I think the two here that truthfully like tomatoes are Sharon and Jace. It's Nicole and Sharon. Both of you get to choose one person to take a big juicy bite of a tomato. Wow. I will choose Nicole. Three, two, one. Oh, that's a tomato lover that's right juicy. there. Oh, wow. Zarya, it's your turn. Who would you like to take a big juicy bite of a tomato? <laughs> Three, two, one. Ooh, oh, ooh, you were juicy. Deep, it was a juicy. Juicy indeed. How's that chew through? <laughs> that totally ruined everything for me. I'm going to stick with my original answer, which is Sharon and Jace. Zara? Sharon, Nicole. Will the true tomato lovers please take a tiny step forward and raise your hand? <laughs> the two that we gave the tomatoes to? <laughs> I picked Sharon and Jace, and both of them, they hate tomatoes. I'm actually allergic to tomatoes, so like I can't have them unless they're so cooked. So if we had given you, I you would've- I wouldn't have bit it. I would not have taken you'd it. You'd have been like, oh, I just ate. That would've been a tilt. Man. That's why I was just like, yeah, I just no, stared no, so I hard, like, yes, pick me. And it worked. Sharon, you hate them? Oh, I can't stand them. I'm the one that takes them off her burgers and set. <laughs> she does. And She's that was the first thing you said about tomatoes, especially on a burger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For me, legitimately, burgers are my favorite food. And I think the thing that will absolutely ruin a burger 
is putting raw tomato on it. You guys love tomatoes. How much do you guys like tomatoes? Literally told you, I grew up eating them like apples. They were in my lunchbox See, somehow every hearing day. it as a truth, it sounds <laughs> different, all right? I needed to hear it again. Cherry tomatoes are amazing. Uh, I used to eat them so much growing up that my mom said I would turn into a cherry tomato. Wow, and so were you pretending that you said tomato weird the whole time? I was saying tomato weird. <laughs> <laughs> What's in the box? In this round, we will be presenting our line with boxes. Inside each box will be an assortment of items. Each person will describe what is in their box to our contestants, and you contestants must decide if that person is telling the truth or lying. <laughs> I. What's in the box is a, uh, it's a truck and there's a shark in the back. A truck with a shark in the back? Yeah, like a like a semi truck with a shark in the back. As in, it's got an open back, or it's in a it's in a container. Well, like it's tra it, it's a truck transporting a shark. The shark's not driving. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna shark tell you right back, now. It's not if driving. only. What color is the truck? The truck is orange. What color is the shark? Shark color. What? Gray. I don't know. Okay. It's a gray I, shark. I, I'm not looking at it, so I'm wondering. It's a gray shark. I think that Brian is lying. His initial instinctual response was to say, I don't know. It means, oh, I haven't thought of that lie yet. And I think he's telling the truth because I think he got offended that I was asking him too many questions, like I didn't believe him. Like I didn't trust him as a friend in that moment. All right, Brian. What's, What's in the box? box? Oh! <laughs> Brian is telling the truth. Thanks, buddy. Of course, man. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> oh. Avert your eyes, Noah. <laughs> Do you know what octopus is? No. A rock it's, line. it's an optic. Next. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> you opened it. Do you know what a rock octopus is? Is it's that like an a, octopus a, with a guitar? It's like a little fidget toy. It's an octopus with a the rock as its head. It's real. It's a real thing. It's a real product. It's a real product. Is it standing it, up? Is it lying down? So it's it's about it's about this big. Mm -hmm. It's In all width? it's all red. Uh huh. And the the arms are like. If you were to twist it like this, the arms would do this, and it has the rock's head on top of it. Prior to seeing this, were you familiar with a rocktopus? I was familiar with the rocktopus, which is why I laughed so hard. Okay, I am going to say, Nicole, I think you're telling me the truth. I think she's lying. You don't think there's a rocktopus under there? <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> Product? Liar! You are telling the truth, Nicole. Nicole! What's in the box? What? <laughs> what? It's a Viking helmet with scrunchies. Yeah, I know. What? I mean, I like knew it the whole time. <laughs> How do you so even come up with this octopus? Is is it real? Can somebody fly in the octopus? Dwayne the octopus oh. Johnson. There he is. What? This is a that's a octopus. Okay. Who did this? <laughs> there is an action figure of Brad Pitt from the movie Seven in this box. <laughs> is it? No. They're laughing too much for it to be a, just an action figure. It's funny, but I don't think an action figure is that funny. I think it's funny, but I'm the same exact friend. I do really, I don't think that it's the action figure under there. I don't. Me neither. Julian, you're lying. You're a liar. You're lying. Julian. What's in the box? Yeah! <laughs> we got some points. All right. Hey, both of us got points. I liked it. I just, I just think it's hilarious. You guys are so stupid. <laughs> it's a Why baby is it so funny? With a mustache, <laughs> playing a guitar. How big is the baby? Baby like that big. And the mustache? Was it stuck on, or does the baby come that way? Oh. Baby came that way. <laughs> So the the guitar is held in the baby's hands. Yeah. How? Act out. Articulate bed. yourself like the baby like is articulated, stars, holding it. Whoa. I say to me with confidence, Sharon, what's in that box? <laughs> baby holding the guitar. I think Sharon's telling the truth. I think she's lying. Sharon, what, what is in the, the box? box? It's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> with a mustache. <laughs> Zara, why'd you think she was lying? I don't know. I wanted to think that, like, in Sharon's mind, she knows that, like, two other people have lied straight, and it's, like, would be unexpected that she would lie again for a third time. And it's unexpected. I wouldn't guess it, so I was like, you're absolutely right. I should have done that. Oh. <laughs> Inside this box is, um, 
I guess that's probably Scar from The Lion King, and he's like got Simba in his mouth. Like he looks like he's just eating Simba. With a fork and a knife? Is there no, a he's table? Just, yeah. He's in his mouth. He's just literally in. The <laughs> other action figures I'm trying to just like look at shoved in its mouth. Too. What part of the body is being eaten? His butt. Oh! From the butt on the side, like it's the upper thigh, or like, you know, butthole forward and, you know, almost like, uh, almost like it's a cigar. Tail first, like he's just starting with the tail. <laughs> oh, uh, the tail is up? Uh, is, there, is there blood effects or anything happening? No, there's no like painted on blood or anything. I feel comfortable about this one. Okay. Yeah? You mm -hmm. think you know? Mm -hmm. Noah, Zarya, what do you choose? He's a truth teller. I think the same, I think you're telling the truth. Jace! What's in the box? Wow! It looks like uh, a dragon eating a puppy, I think. Yes, it is. Yeah. A dragon eating a puppy. But he is eating his butt first. Yeah. That was impressive. That, yeah. In this round, we will learn about a very unique near-death experience. Who here has almost died in a haunted house? There is a uh, haunted sewerway underneath uh, an abandoned mental hospital in the town that I grew up in, and uh, I almost died in there. Well, you know how scared I get anyway, and I got tickets to Bloom House. I literally almost had a heart attack. They had to shut down and bring paramedics in. Got too scared, tried to escape, did a header down the stairwell. When I was in college, we were filming a Blair Witch-esque type thing, went into a haunted house, it's played with a Ouija board, and you know, the spirits didn't like us, collapsed in the floor into the basement. I worked for Knott's Berry Farm. I was going backwards through a maze, and I almost got trampled to death. I need details. <laughs> I think I already know who's telling the truth and who's lying. Only one person in this line is telling the truth. It's up to you to identify Only the one, one person. Only one. Your time starts now! Tell me, what was your story again? Give me more details on that experience. So I was working at Knott's Berry Farm in a group called the Tricksters. The Tricksters were allowed to do uh, basically whatever it is that we wanted, including going backwards through mazes while people were going in the opposite direction because we thought it was funny. So while this was happening, a group got so scared they knocked me over and they trampled me. <laughs> How many people do you know? <laughs> How many feet? Great. How many feet? <laughs> yeah. Let me see. How many feet did you feel on your face? Like an estimate of how many people, because trampled, you could get you could get stepped on one or two times and just be like, alright, that hurt. <laughs> I don't know because I was covering my head and face hoping to not die. A group can knock you over, but I think you can stand your ground. I don't think it was that much of a of a, of a rush. It you doesn't a sound lawyer like. You're right here. Uh, Nicole. Yes. What state did you go to college in? New York. You, you were filming a Blair Witch style movie yes. for, a for a college project? For a college project. And the basement caved in? Yes. After you used a Ouija board? Yes. I just wanted you to confirm that story because that's a ridiculous story. <laughs> and it sounds like a lie. I just wanted you to lie to me again. <laughs> yeah, I just I wanted just... to. Yeah. How many other people were with you doing this? It was me and two other guys. There were three of us that were filming together. So how old is this building? Like, was it a building that was It was still a dilapidated house. It was called the Suicide House. Nine different right, people you said that. through the history of time had committed suicide there, so nobody wanted to live in the house. Okay. Sure it is about to. <laughs> What's tripping me out the most right now is the timing of her story. Like, the timing of everything happening exactly how it was supposed to, and then the base, the just floor giving in. I just feel like you get It's been there for trouble. a long time, and the minute you enter it, and the minute you do this board game, it's like, it's all right, I'm out. I'm falling through the floor. Sharon. It was a Bloomhouse haunted house. Yeah, that she got. So where was that? That was at Universal? They have they have Blumhouse. It was downtown. It was right after we had moved here. So we get there and we're standing in line and we have to go through these like big, they're balloons, big blow up things. And so you have to walk through it and you can't see anything. I literally had this woman's dra uh, strap on her thing wrapped around my hand, pulled tight into me. And this thing, whatever, jumped out, and they just go, <laughs> I literally just went, <sighs> like I couldn't scream. I went down on the ground, pulled this poor woman, because I still have her purse wrapped around. She lands on top, and she's like, uh, ma'am, are you okay? <laughs> okay. They had to turn on the lights. <laughs> They brought the paramedics in, they took me out on a stretcher, and Did yeah. you let go of the lady? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was your story again? There is a, a series of sewer tunnels in the town that I grew up in called Northville. So we're in there, and um, 
We're like, this is not scary in here. It's like, whatever. Uh, we came upon a, a group of some homeless uh, individuals uh, and they were not pleased that we were in there. So there was one just like scary dude. They have like, like it literally looks like a movie where they have like the barrel, like fire going. And then this dude, like I was, it was like a crocodile Dundee knife. He just was like, you little, uh, F-words, get out of here, yeah. like, or I'll come kill you. And I was just like, oh my God. So we just we just turned and ran and never ever went back in the sewers again. So Julie, tell me again how yeah, you mine's, die. mine's, I feel like is really boring compared to mm -hmm. these ones, but in my elementary school, they would do a haunted house every Halloween. And my dad is like obsessed with Halloween. It's his hobby, he's a Halloween nut job. And so he and the other dads would always go like really hard to make this haunted house. And the elementary school is two story. And I'm up on the second story and one of the dads, he's wearing like a like Loch Ness monster costume jumps out at me, I scream my head off, I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I'm sprinting into the stairwell, go too fast, do a header down the stairs, split my skull open. I've got a scar if you wanna find it under all this hair. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that, that was really convincing. You're confident now? I was confident until the final story, and now I'm no longer confident. Julian's telling the truth. I think Julian's telling the truth too. I thought it was Sharon, but then Julian's story, it just checked out. Julian, are you telling the truth? No. Really? <laughs> I was so what hopeful part for his of that wacky was fake? dad. I fell in love with your wacky dad. My wacky dad is real. <laughs> he uh, is real? Oh, he, okay. yeah, he does Halloween crazily every single year. I've got a lot of photos. See, that's Man. why. See, like, a lot of the stories are Show real. Who do you guys think is telling the truth? I think Brian is. I think, I'd share it. I'm hoping. Brian, are you telling the truth? No. What? <laughs> <laughs> Which means, Sharon, are you telling the truth? No. <laughs> <laughs> Two people left, you both get to choose one person. It's not Nicole! It's Nicole! I'm voting for Nicole! No, it can't be Nicole! I don't believe in Ouija boards, I don't believe in ghosts, I didn't even know there were basements to break in New York City, but you convinced <laughs> me. You didn't know That's tomatoes it. were green! I <laughs> did it! I did it! I did it! Nicole, you did it. That happened to you. I choose Chase! On the count of three, will the truth teller please step forward? One, two, three! It was in upstate New York. We were in a tiny town called Cherry Valley, which was what the documentary was called. The town was built on an ancient Indian burial grounds. We really did go in. We set up our like little film kit, started playing with the Ouija board. It really did say goodbye over and over. When I asked, are you mad at us? Ghost had a sense of humor, literally collapsed the basement. I thought I was gonna die. We like grabbed our stuff, ran out. My friend yelled, holy spirit, stay in the house. And like, we both escaped, and then he actually fell through the doorway of the house on the way out. That's in the documentary? Yeah, would you I include? don't know the documentary is online anywhere or like where it exists because that was like a college thing before. Oh my like, God, you have the only proof of ghosts like, ever? And you don't <laughs> upload it? And it was what? for a school project? Oh my God. <laughs> and we got a C. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that means with a score of five to three, the first Winner of the first episode of Line of Liars is Noah Grossman! Yay! Oh my god! Oh, thank you! Wow! Oh my, oh my goodness! Thank you so much. I want to thank uh, everyone at React uh, behind the camera. Man, I want to thank Jada. I want to thank Joe. Yeah, thank you very much. This is fun. Look at that. Yeah, there you go. We want you to appreciate. Yeah, that's a liar, liar, pants what? on fire trophy. Oh wow! Pants on fire. I love that. I didn't That's even notice that. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. All right, get out of here, you dirty liars. <laughs> <laughs>